I don't know. Give us the glasses. It's a queer looking craft. It's a French one. Ever since the fall of France, Frenchmen have been escaping to Britain in small boats like this. They leave France to fight for France. You left from Pample? Pample, yes. Oh, did you have a chart or anything? Yeah, oh, just a little one. Oh, is that all you got? Yeah. Just from little, for me, Marie. Good. Uh, you sail from... Uh, Pample. And uh, you expected to land where? Uh, Brixham. Brixham. Oh, not too bad. You made Falmouth. Uh, and where were you attacked? About here. Is it Mitchell? Well, oh, the Messerschmitt? Yes. Oh, and your friend was wounded then? Yes. Oh, it's not very serious. Oh, it's not very serious because you can't get a bottle of Oh, that's a matter of opinion. He has the wound. <laughs> and what do you want to do now? I want to do a free fresh day now. Oh. Well, I uh, wonder that, first of all, you must uh, be interviewed by the security yeah. police to establish your identity. Yeah. Uh, we must know that you are our friends. Yes. And uh, then I hope that your wish will soon be granted to fight the harm. To the Free French Naval Headquarters in London, each week new recruits come to sign on. This is the moment for which they've waited and worked. These men you see here have left their country of their own free will, left their families and children, because they believe that by fighting with us they can best serve France. Thus, France takes up arms again. They hear the terms of their engagement. L'intéressé a déclaré avoir pris connaissance du statut du personnel des forces françaises libres, s'engage à servir avec honneur, fidélité et discipline dans les forces navales françaises libres pour la durée de la guerre actuellement en cours. Aucune objection. Voulez-vous signer? I hereby, of my own free will, agree to abide by the regulations governing the personnel of the Free French Forces and to serve honorably, faithfully and conscientiously in the Free French Navy for the duration of the war now in progress. Bonne chance. Merci, commandant. Volunteers of military age go to training depots while on the President TCA, a floating naval college, the pick of the boys under 17 are trained as future naval officers. Here, seamanship is taught from the first essentials, by models, by actual sailing. Then the cadets progress to the advanced science of modern sea warfare. Most of these boys, too, can tell stories of escapes. Do you remember Mr. Churchill congratulating five young boys who crossed the channel in a canoe? Here's one of them well on his way to joining his first fighting ship. For the Free French Navy has many fighting ships, some of them without counterpart in the world. The Siokouf, by far the largest submarine in the world, with her eight-inch guns, her torpedo tubes and her own reconnaissance plane, could have been a menace to our merchant shipping. It's as well she came over to us. And the Triomphant II, one of the fastest, most powerful destroyers in the world. She can outrun and outgun any enemy destroyer, a destroyer of destroyers. The French call these ships chasseurs, hunters. This one has a rendezvous with a British submarine returning for patrol. She escorts the submarine into port, we see how French warships are lightening the task of the British Navy. These corvettes, though British built, have French crew. They are fighting in the Battle of the Atlantic, escorting with French destroyers 
the convoys which bring arms and food to Britain, though their own country is hungry. Some of the ships they guard are French ships, bringing oil from America, bringing guns and tanks to Britain, and nickel, cobalt, iron and oils from free French Africa. One quarter of pre-war French merchant shipping, 600,000 tons, works for free France and for us. In some of our fishing ports are fishermen from Normandy and Brittany who came over bringing their boats and gear. So now boats from Fécamp, from Pampol, Boulogne, Gravelines go out to familiar fishing ground, but today they bring their catch to Britain. Men on examination ships in some of our harbours must now speak French, if only with their hands. Some old fishermen don't go out to fish. They man a battleship, the Corbet, which, like them, is too old to fight. When its port in England was blitzed, the ovens, which once baked bread for 1,500 sailors, worked day and night to feed the town, while on deck the old fishermen manned the gun. And in the morning there was plenty of bread. And a score of eight bombers shot down by the old Corbet. Such is the spirit of all these volunteers, the spirit which brings them here by many routes. Take the men of one typical ship, a destroyer. The first officer signed on in a merchant ship at Marseilles and took French leave at the first Allied port. The navigator, he escaped from Brittany in a trawler. The midshipman, here at the time of the collapse, decided to stay, although like all Frenchmen at the time he was offered a passage to France. Nearly all these men have stories to tell. Here's a film actor from Paris who escaped from Cherbourg. Although taken prisoner by the British ship which sank his submarine at Dakar, this man now fights with us. In men like these, we see reawakened the spirit of the people of France. <laughs> 